everyone, welcome back. I am in the field right now and I'm on the hunt for a now extinct Mesozoic creature. This is Jurassic Age stuff. Um, what you can find is, it is really the definition of fossiliferous. It's full of many types of marine fossils. Here's there's a, the remnants of that. This is a belemnite fossil. So what were belemnites exactly? Back at camp after a fun day of exploring through those Mesozoic layers, and what I was in search of today were these, belemnites. Now, belemnite is a word that's derived from the Greek word for dart, and that's fitting, per the shape of it. Some people also refer to these as bullet or cigar shaped. And what these actually are are remnants from a once living organism that is now extinct. It was a squid-like organism, and this is part of its internal skeleton. It belongs to a group of organisms which includes things like scallops and nautiluses and octopuses and ammonites. Now, some of these members of, gr of the group have external skeletons, and some of them have internal skeletons. Belemnites had internal skeletons. And this little piece here is the most common fossil that we find related to belemnites. Now, there are some really great um, soft impressions that are found also, but this hard part is what we typically find, and this is referred to as the guard. These guys lived probably around the Carboniferous about 330, 350 million years ago, but they became more common in the Jurassic and Cretaceous periods. That would be about 200 to 65 million years ago, and then they died out sometime around the end of the Mesozoic or the early Cenozoic. Now, sometimes we find the tips, the pointy tips like this, and sometimes we also find pieces together, as you can see here, where we have the pointy tip, and then we also have some of the pieces that were a part of a longer fossil. Now, they break up like this. This is just calcite. And if we look at one of the broken pieces, we can see some of the interior happenings of the fossil. So here we go. If you take a look at that piece right there, it's made of alternating layers of calcite and organic material. And you can see these calcite crystals radiate from the center. And in some specimens, we can also see a little slit in the fossil. Now that slit is from the ventral fissure, and that indicates the underside of the organism. Now the purpose of these guards at the top of the cone in the organism was actually to align the center of gravity and the center of buoyancy. It basically balanced them in the water. Now cephalopods can all maneuver by expelling water, but belemnites also had fins near the top of the guards, and their streamlined shape meant they could really maneuver quickly through the water, like modern day squids. I'll take a look at this belemnite fossil in situ. What we see is the tip here and another piece over here. Now, sometimes we even find where we have lots of belemnite pieces together. What we call a collection of belemnites is a belemnite battlefield. Now, why do they all cluster together? Well, paleontologists have speculated as to why this might happen, and there's a couple good reasons. One of those has to do with the life strategy of belemnites. They were much like modern squids, where they would actually have lots of babies, and shortly after, they actually die off. So perhaps they were employing this type of life strategy, and they would all end up dying together. Another really common speculation is that there's some sort of depositional feature. The ocean currents move the pieces and deposit them somewhere where they all collect. In this particular formation, we can also find uh, bivalves, brachiopods, and ammonites, and other organisms that lived in the seas alongside the belemnites. Now, another reason we might find them clustered together has to do with their predators. We have actually found uh, clusters of them in the guts of sharks. Some of the main predators of belemnites included sharks and crocodiles and plesiosaurs. And while the belemnites were very fast and could get away, they also had another trick up their sleeve. Similar to modern day squids and octopuses, these guys also had an ink sac. In, in fact, we found fossil ink sacs from belemnites. So they were able to emit a cloud of ink to confuse the predators and get away. So was it toponymy, catastrophe, their life strategy? Well, it could be a little of everything, depending on the particular formation and fossils that we find. The belemnites themselves were actually a very important part of the food web because their babies were preyed upon. Belemnites actually have lots of babies. Again, a similarity to modern day squids. 
the belemnite and ammonite planktonic offspring served pretty much as the foundation of the Jurassic and Cretaceous sea food web. Meanwhile, belemnites themselves probably ate crustaceans and other mollusks from the seafloor. They could capture their prey by use of hooked arms, which they could use for stabbing and grabbing. So these belemnite samples I have today are from the Jurassic stump formation, and this stuff included some sandy siltstone deposits. This was probably a superliteral, tidal, flat, sort of nearshore zone, and the belemnites are found in an extremely fossiliferous deposit. If you can see there, there's tons of bivalves in the deposit as well. Another great example of a place where we can find a lot of fossiliferous belemnite deposits is in the Norfolk chalk that we can find in Europe. This was also a shallow nearshore littoral zone. The Norfolk chalk is about a 75 million year old Cretaceous deposit. And what's interesting is when we look at the deposits and we look at the belemnites that we find, it seems that each layer has a different species. So it's very useful for correlating rock ages. Further, belemnite fossils are little capsules of clues to the past. The belemnite guards or rostra are particularly useful paleoecological tools. The geochemistry of their low magnesium calcite and organic content can be analyzed to interpret past environmental conditions, which have applications to reconstructing ancient environments and past climates, predator-prey relations, and comparisons to modern-day squids. Scientists look at things like oxygen isotopes, or derivations from the original elements, to determine things like paleotemperature, because carbonate-rich marine organisms tend to incorporate the local geochemistry into their shells and hard parts, which give us a window to the past. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this look at belemnites today. If you want to see more fossils, crystals, minerals, and rocks, subscribe here, and I'll see you next time.